Um, so uh, we did this slide on Monday. I get my days mixed up. This is Wednesday. We did this slide on Monday <coughs> where we said you can see how much work is done by taking the force you need to apply to, for instance, to relocate an object a certain distance, D. So you simply just multiply those together. And I said that you're going to want to, um, the problems I give you are going to have, the force is going to be in newtons, okay, F is going to be newtons, the distance is going to be in meters, okay, and the work is going to be in joules, okay, so that's what I said. And actually a joule can break down into a kilogram meter squared per second squared. Um, all right. So uh, now on to kind of relating work to energy. And there's not much of a leap from work to energy. Basically, we say that energy is either stored, okay, we call that potential energy, or energy is being expended, usually in the form of doing work, which actually that's exactly what we talked about a minute ago. Work, if you're relocating an object like that crate, the work that you do is uh, the force that you apply times the distance you apply it over. Um, so that's one way actually to calculate work expended in that way. So two types of energy, um, it would kind of call it yin and yang, potential energy, stored energy, or kinetic energy. Energy is associated with motion. So kinetic energy is actually energy as it is um, being expended. So just like work, units of energy are joules. Um, joules in the metric system, and they would be calories in the English system. So you're going to see here in a minute like the same slide that we did uh, in Monday's lecture, I'm just the same problem. I'm going to pull up the exact same problem again. So when we talk about the work expended, um, work, excuse me, work accomplished, that's equal to the work expended. Work accomplished is equal to the work expended. So here we have, if you want to go back in your notes from Monday, these are the exact same problems, okay, that we worked before. Um, here we have the same guy pushing the same crate. It's like Groundhog Day. Um, actually, he's even going to uh, push it with the same force over the same distance. So now, though, and your notes, if you want to, this morning I just made this change. If you want to draw a line through work, okay, and then replace it with the word and insert the word energy, you can. So how much energy did he expend? Okay, so actually we could say that energy expended is the force he applied over the distance he applied it. So energy spent is going to look exactly like we worked on Monday. Um, it's going to be that uh, 2.5 newtons um, times the distance, 6.12 meters. Okay, uh, Newton meter is a joule. So we said last time, look, I still have in my calculator, no, I don't. That's something different. Uh, okay, so we're going to give it two, di two digits. So that's why last time we had uh, 15. Did we have 15 last time? Does that look right? 15 units will be joules. Energy expended. So we can go down to the next one, and again, it's just like deja vu, but uh, now instead of how much work was spent, we say how much energy was spent. Okay, again, energy here um, is force times distance, okay? Um, and we use that scientific notation one, uh, excuse me, the Newtons, the force is in packed up in scientific notation. So this actually is a good one to play around with, make sure you can do this, 2.3 times 10 negative 6 newtons, that's the force, times the distance is still that 6.12 meters, okay, and uh, rounding it to two decimals,
I got 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. And units will be joules. Okay, so how much energy did he spend? What was how much work he performed? Same thing. All right. So we're not going to do that last one. I think you got the idea. Um, so this is a busy slide, very busy. But remember I said just a minute ago that, broadly speaking, we have stored or potential energy, abbreviated PE, okay? And then we have kinetic energy, uh, abbreviated KE. Down here are an assortment of stored energies, okay? Everything else above that is kinetic energy, energy that's being spent. So not only do we, can we um, automatically say an energy is either stored, potential, or it's kinetic energy, but also we have these different forms of energy. And I really like this slide because it kind of says how one form of energy can be converted into another. So a theme of this universe is conservation of a lot of things. One of them is conservation of energy. Okay, so it can, it can uh, go back and forth between one form to another. All right, so um, we talked a lot about velocity, a fair bit about velocity in chapter three. The V here is velocity. I know that clock's wrong. Uh. <laughs> You're like, wow. <laughs> the there's a clock behind you that's right. <laughs> and this one's pretty right. Okay, so we said um, there's potential energy and kinetic energy and kinetic energy associated with motion, so actually, if you know the velocity or motion of an object, you can knock out its kinetic energy by plugging it into this relationship. The kinetic energy an object has because of its motion is one half times the mass of the object times its velocity squared. Now remember, velocity is different than speed. Velocity actually gives direction. So in this way, actually, our, um, we say our kinetic energy also has a direction component. So. Um, here we go. Let's do a problem. Let's see what that looks like. Plugging into um, Ke is equal to one half mv squared. Okay. You guys are doing pretty good uh, showing your work. Keep up that good work. One half mv squared. One half times the mass, which is 135 kilograms, times the velocity, which is 13 meters per second, and that's all squared. So, so oh, oh, I got a big number. <laughs> so, I'm going to show you what my calculator displays. 11407.5, and that would be joules. That's what my calculator displays. So rounding-wise, now it finally looks like the fewest digits I have are 2 in the 13. So actually, I can round to 2 digits, okay? I can round my answer to 2 digits. I have 3 here, 2 here. So if I'm going to round to 2 digits, looks like I'm going to keep this, the 1, and the 1, and I'm going to round it. Since this is a four, I'm going to leave the one the same, and I'm going to fill in with zeros. So I'm going to do one, one, zero, zero, zero. One, one, zero, zero, zero joules. You buy that? Cool. So it is a lot more energy. We might even... Um, put that into kilojoules, you know, if we were kind of into that sort of thing right now. Um, or pack it up in scientific notation. But we'll leave it there for now. Okay? Um, good. So, of course, the object that had the uh, higher uh, mass had a greater kinetic energy, didn't it? So which object had the greater kinetic energy? The second one. Why? Because it had the higher mass.
So k is at one k e is equal to one half m v squared. All right. So this will be due on Friday. And I think I have a snapshot of this one. Exercise number twelve. It's on page 106, chapter 4. And it looks like this. Okay, so here's the one that's due on Friday. Which has more kinetic energy? And it gives you a bullet. It gives you the mass of the bullet in kilograms. And it says how fast the bullet's traveling. Or, and this is where you're going to want to figure out, remember scientific notation. If you don't want to mess with scientific notation, for most problems in here, if you want to take this number, we could unpack it. That would be 6.4. Okay, and we're going to move it seven places that way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's my new decimal. And fill in zeros. So if you want to put that in your calculator, you can, or do it both ways if you want. Okay, But that is the mass of the ocean liner. And the velocity of the ocean liner is also given. So you guys are going to use the Ke is equal to 1 half mv squared. I would do that twice and come up with the kinetic energy for both of them because it says explain your, your answer. Questions? Not too bad. Okay. So, uh, gravity, the force of gravity, that mutual attraction between masses anywhere, but in the case of gravity on Earth, it's our mass and the Earth's mass. So, we're being pulled towards the Earth's center, and the Earth is being pulled towards us. So that is a force to be reckoned with when we relocate something um, vertically, okay, horizontally, darn. When we go up or down, okay, when we locate something. Um, so if an object is lifted upwards vertically, we said that object is done on that object. Let's go from a pen to something a little heavier. You can see. Okay, so as I lift this up, I'm working, adding work onto the book. Okay, and actually as um, it goes down like this, it's doing work, okay, because I'm doing effort here and actually, you know, gravity is doing work there. So the work that's done is equal to kind of like the same as the, the force times the distance, okay, but in this case, the force is the force of gravity, okay, and we can actually then substitute in that force of gravity as the mass of the object times that 9.8 meters per second squared. The mass of the object times little g, okay? So doing the substitution then, it looks like this. Work, now that's a couple, that's a capital W. Don't get your little w and your big w mixed up. I do. So big w is work, little w is weight, okay? So big W work uh, when you're relocating an object um, vertically is the mass of that object times G. G is that 9.8 <coughs> meters per second squared times the height that you relocate it. Okay. That's it. So let's do one of those problems. Oops, one more blank. Where H is the height of the object race. All right. So a picture of books on a bookshelf. And those books have a mass of 9.07 kilograms. And they were relocated about 5 feet on the in terms of meters, 1.52 meters. So... 
we're going to knock out what sort of work needed to be exerted to put those books on the bookshelf, assuming you're lifting them up from the floor. So here's how that looks. So these formulas, you're going to want to write those on your note card for your unit exam in here. So we're going to write those on your note card so you can use them. Um, so work done here, is the mass was 9.07 kilograms. Um, the G is that 9.8 meters per second squared, something you're going to want to put on your note card. And the H is the 1.52 meters. Okay. So again, if you just focus on units of work and units of energy are both joules. So we're going to slap a J on this one. Okay. So 9.07 times 9.8 times 1.52. My calculator displayed uh, 135.10672. One three five point one zero oh, six seven two. I said joules. We said joules. Okay. So the rounded answer. Let's see. Let's look back. Looks like I have two digits. Or excuse me, three digits here in my mass. I have two digits in the value I'm using for G, and I have three digits in this one. This last the the height term. So it looks like two wins out. So if I'm going to go with two digits, I'm going to pick the one in the hundreds place, the three in the tens place, and I'm going to round that up, aren't I? I'm going to round the three up. So the reported answer to two digits is one, four, zero joules. But if you put 135 joules, that would be cool. Just avoid putting 135.10672 joules. Avoid that. All right. So that's how much work you needed to exert to relocate those books. Okay. So um, the work accomplished is the same as the energy expended. So if you want to take that same number, or say same as, so here the work expended is equal to energy expended, excuse me, is equal to uh, work done. So in other words, we rounded it to 140 joules. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the answer would be 140 joules of energy? Yes. Would yeah, it would be 140 joules of energy, exactly. You got it. All right. So this one is also due on Friday. Same page now, exercise number four. And we'll take a look at that right quick. It looks like not that. All right. So, how much work is required to lift a 6.0 kilogram backpack up 1.5 meters to put it on? Very practical. <laughs> okay. So, uh, here again, you're going to use work as equal to um, force times distance, but here the force is that mass times the, for the acceleration due to gravity. And instead of distance, we're going to go with height. Okay, final answer. Well, the G always be at 9.8. Yep, yep, the G will always be, um, on this planet anyway, 
9.8 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration due to gravity. Yep. All right. So uh, we talked about kinetic energy is energy associated with something moving. So as I drop this, okay, it's going. To, we know it's going to go faster and faster and faster. It's going to accelerate um, due to the force of gravity. Um, but it's also moving, so it has kinetic energy. But as I hold it, you know, hold the pen, or as I hold this, you know, above the floor, it has what we call it has say stored energy. It has stored potential energy. Okay, it has the ability to fall to the floor this height. Okay, so that's gravitational potential energy. It's potential energy because it's stored, and the way it would be un unleashed is because gravity pulls on it. Okay. Um, so, um, gravitational potential energy, or PE, potential energy because of gravity, actually is the same as we were just looking at a minute ago with regard to um, work needed to relocate an object up to a certain height. So the potential energy of this book actually is the mass of the book times the acceleration due to gravity times the height that this book can potentially fall. Okay, so potential energy from gravity, mass of the book, acceleration due to gravity, that 9.8 meters per second squared, and the height that I've relocated it. So actually, um, the potential energy is the same as the work that I had to do to relocate it there. And we've actually kind of come full circle because we're conserving that. So for instance, you know, it's there, right? So I have to have a certain amount of work to put it here, okay, in joules. And as it sits here, it has the same amount of energy I put into it in a potential energy form. Now it's got stored energy. And I put it there. It's conserved. It's the same number. Same number of joules. Okay. Um, so we'll do an example of that. So let's say you have an apple hanging on the tree there. And the mass of the apple is given, 0.14 kilograms. And the distance above the ground is given, 1.2 meters. So what is its stored energy? What is its gravitational potential energy as it's hovering there? So again, we can come up with its stored energy, potential energy due to gravity, by taking the mass of the apple times that constant, 9.8 meters per second squared, times the height it is above the ground. So it looks like this. 0.14 kilograms, uh, 9.8 meters per second squared, and the height was 1.2 meters. Looks like I'm going to round it to two digits again. I got 1.6464 is what my, aunt, my calculator displayed. And those units would be joules, 1.6464 joules. Then if I'm going to round it to two decimals, I'm going to start from left to right. It's not two decimals, I'm sorry. I'm going to round to two digits. Start from left to right, I'm going to pick the 1 and the 6, and I'm going to truncate it here. Since this is a 4, I'm going to leave the 6 the way it is. So I'm going to get 1.6 joules. Can it be 1.7 because the 6 would round the 4 to a 5, which would turn around and round the 6 to a 7? Yeah, no, it, the thing about that is you can't, when you're rounding, you can't look anything past the next digit. So we can't look at this 6 and round that up and round that up. We have to look at just the next digit, which is the 4, a 4 and the, the, the place after it. So, yep, that would stay the same. Any questions? Potential energy. Okay. 
So actually, I went ahead and printed this out since it's so wordy. It's like, so this one isn't in the book. This one actually is. So this one changes it up just a little bit, but not much. So this will be due on Friday too. So just three problems so far. But it's only 10.30, so. <laughs> By my calculation. So um, I said that in this universe, within our universe, um, energy can be converted back and forth between potential and kinetic, and it can be converted between different forms. Um, but it's always conserved. So, like within the same system, it's always, it's conserved too. So, for instance, as we drop, see this person drop the rock, okay? We drop it from 10 meters, and it's going to fall, you know, to the ground. Um, notice as it was hovering, you know, if this was his rock, it had all potential energy, okay? And then uh, no movement, no kinetic energy. As it's falling, it's going faster and faster and faster. If we were to take a snapshot about here, it's going really fast, has a lot of kinetic energy, but it's kind of its kinetic energy is gained at the expense of its potential energy. It has less potential energy. Okay, right when it hits the ground, not when it stopped. Okay, because when it stopped, it has zero kinetic energy. But right moments before it, it hits the ground, it has the fastest it's going to go. It has the most kinetic energy, but basically it has no potential. energy. So those are actually conserved. And there are some problems we could do to kind of look at how it's converted as it falls from potential energy it's converted to kinetic energy. Okay. But, but we're not going to do that this semester. So energy is going to be conserved. So what I just described is T for total energy, E sub T for total energy. Okay, so within a system, okay, if you're dropping something, uh, at any given time, you could calculate its potential energy because of how far it has left to fall. You could calculate its kin kinetic energy because you know its velocity, and that's, that's got to be the same throughout. Another kind of classic sort of, um, um, not dropping something, but if you picture something on a pendulum, okay, it goes, it swings up and it goes slow, it stops and it swings back down. It's actually going fast as here and it swings up but it goes slower. Okay, it stops and it goes back. That's what a pendulum does, okay? And the ball on the pendulum, actually, we could do the same thing. The total amount of energy at any given time is actually, you can add together, because of its position, how much gravitational potential energy does it have plus how, because of its motion, how much kinetic energy does it have, and that will stay constant. So in physical science, a lot of things are conserved. This is energy is conserved, matter is conserved, momentum is conserved. So the last thing I want to talk about actually kind of leads into what we'll probably be doing in tomorrow's lab, this concept of power. We're kind of finishing up this part, so on Friday we're going to move into um, waves. Um, so power is uh, another formula. The cap, the big W, means work. So basically, you can calculate your power as you after you are based upon the work that you completed and the time that you completed it in. So. Power is equal to work divided by the time that you took to accomplish that work. Um, the units of power are watts, W-A-T-T. -T. Not to be too confusing, but it's a capital W for the variable for watts. Okay. A watt is a joule per second. Makes sense. Energy per time. All right, so back to this poor person moving this box. So here we have the force he's applying. Let's see, look for the newtons. It's 4.5 newtons. The distance he's relocating that box is 
three, four, three meters, the time he's going to take to accomplish that task is 34 seconds. And we're supposed to come up with the power. So if power is work divided by time, and earlier today, actually yesterday, or when we met Monday, we said that work is force times distance, okay, then we could actually do a little substitution here if you wanted to, okay. If we want to take this work and throw it into that work there, okay, we could restate power, P for power, is equal to in the numerator, we have force times distance, okay, in the denominator, we still have time. It's a thought. Either that or knock out the work first and then plug it into that formula. So let's go ahead and look at it this way, okay? So power is equal to the force, which is 4.5 newtons, times the distance, which was 0.343 meters, divided by the time it take, took this person to accomplish that work, 34 seconds. So I got 0.044 displayed uh, 0 0.045397. Remember, units of power are going to be watts. So it looks like we're going to round it to two digits. I have three digits in my meters, but only two digits in my force and my time. So two digits, so the way this works is I'm not going to count that first zero as a digit. It's important, it's a placeholder. So I'm actually going to count the four and the five as real digits. I'm gonna truncate it right there, and since this is a three, I'm gonna leave the five the same. So for your answer, I got 0 0.045 watts. Pretty good. So power is work divided by time. Cool. Well, changing it up a little bit, what if the force and the distance is the same, but we're going to cut the time from 34 seconds to 17 seconds. Seems like he's gonna expend more power, doesn't it? And he is. That's almost kind of an intuitive thing. So in this case, power we said is equal to force times distance or work divided by time in this case, power is equal to that same uh, 4.5 newtons times the same distance, uh, 0.343 meters, um, divided by a different time, 17 seconds. So that's 54.5. And my calculator displays um, 0 0.090794. There's some more digits, but. And units of power are watts. So it looks like we're going to go with two digits. So again, this first zero doesn't count. I mean, it doesn't count as one of our digits. We're going to start with that nine, and then actually we're going to go to that zero after the nine, that does count. But since this is a seven, we're gonna what, have to round that zero up, aren't we? So your answer then would be 0 0.091 watts. Good. 
good with that? Cool. Yay. All right. So then this is the last little bit that is due on Friday. I have an assortment of things due on Friday. And I have a sheet for this one too. And that's all I have for today. Let you out early even. Have a good one. You too. Is that for me? Smarter and smarter. <laughs> How many kids do you have? How many children do we have? Um, three. How long have you guys been married? Like, did you get married when you were young, too? Or no. kind of middle? Kind of middle. Yeah. My husband is nine years older than me. Oh. So I was 23. I think he was 32. That's interesting how it all works out. Yeah, it is. And you've got two children? Three. Three? Oh. Mm -hmm. That's right, you have them. Yep, we have three. They're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I like it though. Without my kids, I don't think I'd know what to do. <laughs> that feels pretty good. <laughs> what are you doing? No, I'm leaving class. <laughs> I got expelled. I'm just kidding. <laughs> See you tomorrow.
finally buy my books today. Yay! So annoying. I do so much work. <laughs> really? Yeah. I'm going to do it now, but... Oh, you, perse you persevered, so you won. Yeah. Well, well, a big part of it was that since my parents make enough, I have to pull, like, pay the whole full prices for my books. And my parents argued on who would pay for it. Everything was a lot of dogs. Well, that puts you in the middle. Yeah. It did. <laughs> <laughs> so I downloaded the show down. Good man. Got down, so I started my computer like just it just stopped like the whole screen turned blue. It was like Rrr. I'm like what are you doing? It's not meant to be. The ones in the library at the 
touch screen ones are actually really good for it. Because when you do two team building, you just hit everything. <laughs> Dude, that's so awesome. <laughs> like if I just if I like turn on Spotify and then turn on the internet, like they'll crash. And explore. It's like <laughs> <laughs> you can't handle it. <laughs> it's bad. Yep. How long do you think it'll go? Um, this one I'm thinking only like 20, 25 minutes. Okay. I'm making sure I still have time for lunch. That's my lunch hour. Okay. <laughs> Did you see the moon last night? A little bit. It's pretty. It yeah, yeah, it was like, long too. Should take a picture of <laughs> 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 yeah. Good idea not to take a picture. <laughs> but you saw it's pretty. Yeah. It was normal. Yeah. Is that, what does that actually mean? Like, like, I read that the whole orangish thing is because of the forest fires that are out west. Forest fires? Yeah, because, like, the smoke oh, heads fire. this way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> forest tires? <laughs> forest fires. Oh. Okay. So the smoke comes and it, like, puts um, smoke in the atmosphere, which actually causes extra scattering. So it colors the moon. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no. I thought it was like some sort of crazy eclipse thing. I was like, dude, I can't get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is legit. I thought it was what you said. Did you something Yeah, because you're going to help the first <laughs> okay, so chapter assignments? Anybody? Everybody? Thank you. Not yet? No. No? That's not. Yes. So don't forget Why? chapter assignments are due by the end of the day today. Just three or so for me. Did everybody, did anybody else see this? This was pointed out to me, this whole... On the planet Mars, right, planet Mars, we actually, NASA has several rovers. The latest rover is um, Curiosity. And so Curiosity got this, sent back this image of um, a feature on Mars. It's the floating spoon. Wait, you're saying they left it there? No. Oh. That, I'm saying the rover saw it, took an image of this, and sent it back. So... That's one of the things that the rover's doing is just like taking photos of rock structures. And um, yeah, but probably what this was was like a vein of material that's like stiff. And basically, um, Mars has a fair bit of um, wind, okay? And so it was like wind that kind of eroded underneath it. So, yeah. Maybe some actual screwing that like the air's toddled through in the sky one day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, I'm thinking the other makes more sense, but yeah. So the game plan for today is we're going to finish um, chapter three, and it probably won't take too long. I don't know. And then we'll have a review session for anybody who wants to meet me down at the chem lab. Yep. Any questions about your test on Friday? Chapter two is due today, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, chapter three is going to be due Friday. So, whenever we finish the chapter in lecture, then it's due, the chapter assignment's due the next day. So, so what time is the end of the day? Three, three o'clock, yeah. And um, my office is in 512, or you can put it in my box. Actually, my office is 508, but you, or you can put it in my box. All right, any other questions about your test on Friday? First one's always like, what's this going to look like sort of thing. We get, we get our note cards, right?